When we speak about the Immaculate Conception, I think most of us know that it's about Mary being conceived without sin. But there are a lot of people who make the mistake thinking that it's about the birth of Jesus. Um, we could say that it points to the birth of Jesus. It was because of Jesus that Mary was preserved from sin. And if Mary wasn't preserved from sin, then Christ couldn't dwell in her womb. The book of Revelation says that nothing unclean shall enter heaven, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood. Which means that God and sin can't coexist together. Wherever God dwells fully, sin can't exist. That's why there's purgatory. It's a place of final purification so that we can stand before God face to face in heaven. What we should be doing in this life is trying to be like Mary. She's the model of the church. She's who we all really long to be like and were made to be, the perfect disciple of Christ without sin and united with God in heaven. But as much as we'd like to be like Mary, our first reading presents us with a more familiar scenario. It's about the fall of Adam and Eve, how they disobeyed God by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because of this, sin entered the world. Sin replaced the harmony with chaos. And we see it in Adam's response to God. He blames Eve, and Eve in turn blames the serpent. Uh, none of them want to take responsibility for the fall, and they're all trying to hide from God. Um, an example that may be a little bit more uh, familiar to us is when we see someone enjoying life or doing well, and it bothers us. Their joy and success, it seems to take something away from us. And so we do everything we can to take that joy from them. We're mean-spirited. We gossip about them. We try to hurt their reputation or even talk them out of something that we know that would be good for them. This is sin. But before sin entered the world, none of us would have behaved like this. We'd all get along with others and say and do things that would build them up. But now, because of sin, we have to struggle to do what's right. We have to fight our fallen nature and the tendencies in us to be mean, jealous, envious, and so forth. Well, the more we fight against our sinful behaviors, then the more we become like Christ and we have less to be purified of when we die. And this is where Mary can help us. So there's two types of people that we saw in our readings today. We have Adam and Eve in the first reading. They disobeyed God by doing what they wanted, and the result was sin and death. And then in the gospel, we have Mary, who obeyed God, saying, Be it done to me according to your word. And the result of her obedience was that she gave birth to life. She gave birth to Christ, who gives life to the world. Well, in our own lives, we can choose to behave like Adam and Eve by rejecting God and living how we want, or we can behave like Mary. Uh, we can be obedient to God and, through us, allow him to give life to the world. St. Paul said in our second reading that we exist for the glory of God. Every single one of us was created for God's glory. We were created for a purpose, and God loves us. Being without sin, Mary, she, she knew this. She was aware of this, and every decision she made was for God's glory. But because of sin, we can forget this. And when we do, we start to live for ourselves. We indulge in our passions, uh, in, in impurities, in drugs, in alcohol, and all kinds of sinful behavior. And before we know it, it can spiral out of control. The scary thing, um, and we see it sometimes today, is that when people get so familiar with their sins that they don't even care anymore. They enjoy their sins, and they don't want to be told otherwise. Well, at that point, it takes the mercy of God to knock some sense into the person, to put them in a situation that will open their eyes to the truth and lead them back to him. Well, one thing that could do this, and that God's used in the past, is a vision of hell. Teresa of Avila, she had a vision that stayed with her the rest of her life after she had it. She said, I realized that it was the Lord's will that I should see this place which the devils had prepared for me there and which I had merited for my sins. The entrance, I thought, resembled a very long, narrow passage, like a furnace, very low, dark, and closely confined. The ground seemed to be full of water, which looked like filthy, evil-smelling mud, 
and in it were many wicked-looking reptiles. At the end there was a hollow place scooped out of a wall, like a cupboard, and it was here that I found myself in close confinement. But the sight of all of this was pleasant by comparison with what I felt there. I felt a fire within my soul, the nature of which I am utterly incapable of describing. My bodily sufferings were so intolerable that though in my life I have endured the severest sufferings of this, severest sufferings of this kind, none of them is of the smallest account by, by, by comparison with what I felt then. And even these are nothing by, comp- uh, by comparison with the agony of my soul, an oppression, a suffocation, and an affliction so deeply felt and accompanied by such hopeless and distressing misery. To say that it is as if the soul was continually being torn from the uh, body is very little, for that would mean that one's life is being taken by another, whereas in this case, it is the soul itself that's tearing itself to pieces. The fact is, I cannot find words to describe that interior fire and that despair, which is greater than the most grievous tortures and pains. I could not see who was the cause of them, but I felt, I think, as if I were being both burned and dismembered. And I repeat that that interior fire and despair are the worst things of all. Well, this is where the life of sin and disobedience leads us. Like Teresa of Avila, the devil has plans for us. He has a place prepared for us in his kingdom, and he tirelessly works on every one of us in this life to lead us there. His goal is to tempt us to sin so that he can destroy what God loves. And we can go along with it, we can play his game and allow him to pit us against each other, or we can be like Mary and strive to live according to God's will. We're all created for a purpose, we're all created out of love and made for greatness. Like Mary, God wants us to be without sin so that he can be with us and we can dwell with him in heaven. And so today, on this solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, we turn to Mary and we ask for her help to be like her. And one really good way of doing this is by memorizing and praying the prayer on the Miraculous Medal. It reminds us of the Immaculate Conception. It's, O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee.